Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another crazy creation that I came up with. This is a 3D printer that I call Rook. This is a mostly 3D printed 3D printer. As you can see, there's a top, a top frame, a bed frame, and a bottom frame on this printer and they're all 3D printed in one piece. The idea is these pieces here are small enough to be able to print on most 3D printers. The external dimensions here are only 200 millimeters, so you should be able to print those on most um, Ender 3s and that type of thing in one piece. Um, I printed these out relatively uh, simple as far as like infill and such. Uh, it's only like 15% infill with three walls and I'm using PLA Pro. This printer is Core XY. I wanted to start using Core XY a lot more, so I wanted to design a Core XY system that's compact. These are MGN9C rails, so very small rails, and uh, I wanted to fit all the Core XY components on them because I want to use this Core XY, these parts, for other printers. This printer costs roughly $260 US to build. I have a GitHub for this printer right now. You can find it in the description below. I do have a bill of materials for this printer. Just note that some things may be um, incorrect or missing. Um, take your time when you're looking through it. If you're gonna build one of these printers, um, I've tried to basically include everything that I can think of. Um, I still have to go on there and add some M5 screw size bolt sizes here. There's a couple M5 bolts on this printer, really only for the Core XY, that's it. Um, the rest is just M3, so a package of uh, assorted M3 bolts from like Amazon or Alley or whatever would be fine for this printer. The frame is actually utilizing the eight millimeter linear rods as the Z and the frame. That's probably the idea that came to my mind when I thought about this printer. I wanted to incorporate the Z into the frame. Um, if I'm already going to have these kind of metal supports, why not use them for the frame as well as the Z? So, And it's worked out quite well. Uh, this printer does print um, pretty nice. I'm pretty happy with the print quality. Um, it's a pretty speedy printer. Obviously it runs Clipper. Um, the part cooling is remote, so it just has a 120 millimeter fan at the very back here. There's just no room on the tool head. The print area on this printer is only 120 by 120. It's a very, very small printer. This is smaller than Bijou, my other printer. Um, it's a tiny little guy. And um, I, I'm kind of really into the small printers right now. Um, I want to make them usable though. and. Uh, that's kind of my main goal. I want to make them inexpensive, I want to make them usable, and I want to think outside the box for things. So that's where this kind of this printer came from. Um, most of the parts for this printer are pretty straightforward. I'm using uh, 20 tooth idlers. Please um, try to buy high quality idlers like Pouge or Mellow, something like that. I've definitely had idlers explode on me or break apart, as you can see here. I hadn't even used this yet. It literally just fell apart. So don't cheap out on idlers. The printer, you can't really see, but on the top, it actually uses FR695 bearings, similar to like a Voron. Um, I, I prefer those. Um, I usually have them on hand type thing. You can find them on AliExpress, and I think Amazon even carries them now. And then just note that all of these pulleys are backed by washers in some form. So what I mean by that is the pulleys don't actually touch the printed plastic directly. So the 22 idlers that you see here, they're backed by M5 washers on the top and bottom. And then the FR, or sorry, the FR965 bearings are the ones that actually are backed by these washers. The idlers are actually backed by these kind of shims. These are six by five by one. So the outer diameter of these washers is six millimeters. 
The inner diameter is five millimeters and the thickness is one millimeter. I have to use that just for space constraints. And on an idler like this, like a 20 tooth idler like this, the bearing surface is too small to fit a M5 washer normally. This is too big and it will rub on the bearing and the actual idler and you won't get smooth motion. So I have to use these smaller shims. I get these off of AliExpress. It's unfortunately kind of like the only specific part you need. You could probably make a 3D printed shim work. And that's totally fine. This printer is Bowden. Um, again, just going for simplicity, easy to use. There's not really a great mount for Bowden on this printer. Um, I actually had to drill some holes in the back of the motor mount to mount my Bowden um, bracket there. There's not a whole lot of space on this printer as far as mounting. Um, I would like to add like some you know three millimeter holes along the side of the frame on the tops and bottoms just so there's more places for mounting. Um, the linear rails actually bolt to the frame with threaded inserts so there's uh, heat set inserts. There's not very many on this printer but they're a necessity for some things. This uses two lead screws. Um, it's 150 millimeter tall lead screws. I'll try to take you around the printer here a little bit so you can see uh, maybe a side view a little bit better. Let's take this off here. So that gives you a better idea of the printer. Um, like I say, I'm, I'm actually very happy with it. Uh, the printer is not done in my opinion. Um, this is a beta printer still. And Ideally, I would like the bed to be 3D printed right into the frame. Um, if anyone's seen my 3D printer called Cappy, that used a 3D printed bed and I really like that. It cuts down on parts and it cuts down on cost. This is not heated, of course. I really never intended this one to be heated, but if you printed this out of ASA or ABS, you could certainly have a heated bed for PLA and stuff like that. There's not a whole lot of room here for mounting a mainboard either. Um, I kind of just have my mainboard sitting out on the side. Um, again, like as with anything, this is a prototype. I'm sure you could get a mounting solution on the bottom frame here. You can see here my bracket for the 120 millimeter fan. And then I just have a very generic uh, duct that does work fine. However, it definitely could be better for sure. Um, there's probably too much air blowing on the hot end. Um, but the printer does print quite nice. Um, I have a little bit of tuning to, to do, of course. You can see the top layer there is um, under extruding just a little bit, but uh, the print actually is quite nice. And like I say, the printer does print well. I've, I've been very happy with it so far. Um, it's a pretty fun printer and uh, there's some really cool color combinations you can do with this printer. That's another neat thing is um, not only is the frame very cheap because it's 3D printed, but you can mix and match colors and all that kind of stuff. I've printed this out of Polymaker uh, PLA Pro. Um, this is generally what I use for most any 3D printing projects. I made the tool head very, very simple. It's got nothing on it but the hot end and a fan. Um, you can really easily see your part being printed. I like that. Um, this does only use right now the two bolt uh, CR10 style hot end. I generally buy these on Amazon for like eight, ten dollars and I have good luck with them. However, I would potentially like to modify another tool head for this so you could use a like rigid mount, um, like a CHC, Triangle Lab CHC hot end, something like that. I have a couple of those. Um, maybe you could use a repeater or something like that. I, Admittedly, a Rapido is probably a bit too much money for a printer like this. It's almost half the cost of the entire printer. Um, but those are some thoughts and uh, ideas. Uh, pretty standard um, LM8UU bearings for the Z. 
Uh, like I said, these are 150 millimeters lead screws. These uh, linear rods here are 200 millimeters. They actually press into the 3D printed part here. So the bottom frame has a, um, the hole doesn't go all the way through. So this gets pressed in until it stops. The top frame, the, the hole does go all the way through. You can't really see it because it's blocked by the linear rail. And that's for a little bit of adjustment. So you can make sure that the top frame and the bottom frame are, are similar. I didn't really have to tweak that on mine. I just kind of pressed the top and bottom together with the bed frame in place and uh, that was good. And the reason why I am using bed screws on this design is I wanted to make sure the bed was parallel with the nozzle. Um, on a 3D printed bed, I don't have that option and I can't, I can't really easily fit uh, like a BL Touch or a Clicky Probe or something like that for bed mesh and things like that. So. I'm still debating on how I want to do that. Like I say, I would prefer to get rid of the bed screws and the glass and just have a 3D printed bed. And I would like to make this middle frame a little bit um, less material needed. It's pretty uh, beefy for no reason. Um, I mean, it works for sure, but I think I could save some plastic and make it a uh, quicker print and I could integrate the, the bed into the frame and I think that would even make this uh, printer much simpler and, and uh, funner to build. But yeah, that's um, the printer I call Rook, everyone. Um, like I say in the description below, there will be a GitHub for this printer with a bill of materials. Um, I have uploaded the Fusion 360 file for this printer as um, also the step file. So if you wanna use Onshape or some other um, software to modify this printer, tweak it. Of course, there is a channel on my Discord called Rook. I encourage everyone to join my Discord. We have an amazing community there building all sorts of cool stuff. And I would really like to see people make some mods for this printer, have some wacky colors, some cool designs, um, approve upon it, that type of thing. It was a really fun printer for me to design. I will probably eventually come back to it and maybe make some minor tweaks and things like that here and there. But like I say, it's it's good enough for me right now for it to be released, I think, in beta form. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. I want some other people to enjoy the printer and build it and maybe use some parts that they have laying around and assemble one of these. So yeah, thanks again everyone for watching and uh, please like, share and subscribe. Thank you.